there is a saying, always look on the bright side of life, right? So when I, I went to the High Court, I was so angry because I thought, well, I've looked up all the laws. They're not allowed to move our country, right, number one. And they're going against the children's panel, which was well-founded. You know, it was well-founded. I, I, I won an appeal against them taking her to London, but they'd already taken her. Right, and when I got down to London, do you know what the lawyer said? It was Baby P, P's lawyer. They started shuffling papers saying we don't know where she is, right, to give me a panic attack. And then, but anyway, when I was in the High Court, right, I was so determined. So determined because, I don't know if anyone else understands this, but if you're a skin robot, your children are you. Because the only truth I really knew about myself was a reflection on their faces about me. So when I lost them, I was like, where is my face? You know? So I was looking, you know, so anyway, when I went down to the High Court in London, it was judge, it was another judge, it was the lower court first. And the, the woman, she said, this is going to be a straightforward adoption. And I started laughing inside myself, like, they're on some other planet, right? If they think this is going to be a straightforward, old-fashioned adoption. And I wasn't dressed up, right? Because I wasn't ready for leaving. Because I just got away from the skinhead's house. I was just learning to fucking eat properly. And then I had to go to start going down to London 20 times, right? So, and that means 40 because it's your journey back as well. And to lawyers. And I had court up in Scotland as well. So in between going into the London courts, I was going in the Scottish courts as well. So I stopped smoking and everything because I was just determined, you know, this is my focus and that's it. So anyway, um, when I got into the London courts, I had studied so much on law um, and everything about my daughter again and got information about her and her well-being and I made recordings of social workers telling me that she's in great health and but they had lied, you know, because in the paperwork that they had hidden and blacked out and years earlier, they hadn't told me that she was still with this abusive situation. So anyway, when I was down in London... The something happened and they said that the woman's address where my daughter was staying was in the bundle of paperwork that they had given me. So they have to take it to the High Court because I have to be given an injunction to say that I'm not allowed to go near their street. And they said, could you please return the paperwork? I said, listen, I don't read all your paperwork. I just read what I need to read. And... And I didn't bring it to court after a few weeks because it was too heavy for me because they kept adding to it and saying, add this to page 344. And I was, at first I did what they said and I realised what I was do what I was doing, they were telling me to do to prepare for court. When I actually got there, it was nothing to do with that. So I very learned quickly to do my own work. And I picked everybody's brains, MP's brains. I was on the phone, I was in the libraries, um... Anyway, so when I was in the high court, I was fully equipped mentally. And then I was completely relaxed as well. I made sure that I was complete, because I knew this is like one shot, you know. And they said, right, you've got to go to the high court. So when we went to the high court, um, there was just so much commotion around me. Nervousness. The social workers were huddling together with the child, my daughter's guardian. And so the first time I went down, because I thought this is a farce, I'll be able to finish this in Scotland. So I just started... I went down like a ragamuffin, right? And I had taken a suitcase, not even a pull-along one. You know, one of the old-fashioned ones. Because I wasn't thinking. I was just like, fuck you, give me her back. So anyway, um, it, was, it was like Mr. Bear. You know that bear that travels about and with a suitcase? That's what I looked like. Anyway, I got there and they said, right, it's going to the high court. So when they said it's going to the high court, I thought, right, I better wear a suit. So the next time I went in, I had a suit on and... And then my daughter's supposed lawyer came over to me and he was like as if it, it I was a new face and he went, um, are you the mother's lawyer? And I said, I am the mother. And he was like choked in his own throat. And he had to go back and say, that's her. That's her with scrubbed up. <laughs> you know. And then the judge started saying the same thing. It's a straightforward situation. Now, everything I said to the judge, as in number one, all of our human rights have not been upheld in Scotland, and the courts in Scotland are still not being upheld because they're all deferring to you in London. 
So the judge was just as if I'd never said it. As I was talking to the air. And he starts going on about, or my barrister, Neelam Sultan, she started going on about universal rights that that were being broken because the law was different in Scotland from England. So I was having to learn both laws. I don't know what else other point she was making, but she was basically saying, pulling something out that it was not just a little bit wrong, it was fucking terribly wrong what was happening to me and my daughter. So... The judge said, all right then, get the Attorney Secretary General, Kovac, to come down from Scotland and say what he thinks. Now, I already knew what he thought because there is only one thing he can think and that is you have to abide by the Scottish law and Scottish and law are, in, are different laws. So he came down and said exactly what we all knew he was going to say because he's no other choice but to say it. And then... He said, as long as Miss Can got her rights in Scotland, you can do what you want in England. And it made no difference to the whole case. So my barrister was still going on and on and on about this UN break that they've done, right? I've put it up on Facebook. My rights and my daughter's rights not being a pla um, dealt with properly because the Scottish law should apply to us, not the English law. We shouldn't be in England. The placement was completely wrong and obviously it went against my well-founded appeal to have my daughter back. So we had done all the paperwork but nothing was being done. So on the last day my barrister still going on and on about this thing and it was this final submission. So I said to her, I need to, I gave her a piece of paper and said you're not saying what I want you to say and she wouldn't say it. So I said to her, I'm sacking you in the middle of her giving her submission. And she said, hold on a minute, judge. And she turned around and said to me, what do you mean? I said, I want to represent myself now. I want to give the final submission. She said, no one's ever done that before. It has to be a barrister, I have to ask. So she asked and he said, all right, I'll accept it. And he said, um, how long do you want to prepare? I said, 20 minutes, and that was fine. So everyone recessed for 20 minutes and then I took the bundle of paperwork which I knew at the back of my hand her bundle of paperwork because mine was I didn't bring mine I knew it all I had the important pages everything else was bullshit I'm talking four pages were the only thing that was important not the 495 and the the 300 attachments that were supposed to go with it meant nothing because when you discover the foundation of the neck which is Whatever is in the best interest of the child, the child, that's what is, you know, the foregone conclusion because it's not about what the mummy wants, what's best for Noni. So here Noni was being adopted out by this woman who was abusing her, throwing her by the face, depriving her of food. And when you look at all the paperwork dates, you see that subsequently after she was, you know, having to watch porn during the night with someone and being thrown by her face and slammed in chairs. She had sore tummies in school. so there was, And there was lots of little things like that. She wasn't concentrating properly. She was becoming a problem. Whereas at our previous carers, where she had been for four years, she was fine, except she was just a bit energetic because it was an old lady that was looking after her. And the old lady was a bit run off her feet because Noni was so strong and powerful because she had contact with her sisters for a few years. So they were putting a lot of, come on, get up and get yourself going type of thing in them in her. So she was a bit too much for her, her to handle because she was so intelligent. Anyway, so, um, yeah, so we're in the last submissions and I went for a walk in the courtyard and I just calmed myself down and said, I know what I have to say and just go up and say it. So I, I asked her, the, my barrister to get the paperwork I needed out showed her what I needed and it was ready when I came back up the stairs and I just explained to the judge Moyston from the very beginning how you know I gave him a 60 page um, statement and a, and a new one page statement so we knew in detail how I was brought up as a Jehovah's Witness denied my human rights brought up in torture blah 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 I showed him the tapes of the social work saying Word for word, I have the transcript saying, we didn't know we were doing we were doing the wrong thing for you at the time, but we didn't know then. But it's too late now. It's at adoption stage. They were her exact words, Francis McGuire. Now, it's on tape. 
and I explained to judge the only reason that I recorded her was because I wanted to prove in court that they're not giving her my letters because they take, keep taking these presents off me and gifts that I'm leaving for Noni but I'm not getting anything back. I'm not getting anything back to say she's got them and then they started saying they didn't give her them and they're in a storage and I said well give me them back and they wouldn't give me them back so I wanted to record the conversation so I could show the judge that I'm not a liar because I didn't want to be accused of perjury because they kept saying I was lying about things or misrepresenting whatever they were saying I turned up for court one day the last final day and Claire Smith said to me we didn't think you were going to turn up today and I said, I've been to the first 19 times and 11 times in Glasgow Sheriff Court fighting for her. What would make you think I wouldn't turn up today? And I realised later it was a threat. So I said to the judge that as well. And he said, we're not going back. I said, I've explained to you about my background, about the perjury in my case. You have the tapes about what social work said. Your answer was, we're not going back. So therefore, you yourself are denying me my rights from previous courts. And because you're the higher court, you're depriving my rights from the Scottish courts, which is not legal. Even though the higher court is a higher court, they're two different laws. And my case and Noni and I are born Scottish. And there was no legal placement to actually put her down there in England in the first place. And none of our u universal human rights have been upheld. So when I presented all this to the judge, he interrupted me at the end and said, Are you quite finished, Miss Can? And I said... If you want me to be judge. And he said, I want you to be. And he slammed his book shut and he shouted at the social work. I am deferring judgment. And he left. And then sent me a letter saying, no, the adoption has gone through. I couldn't travel back down to London because I was so angry. But they gave me a, a chance to appeal at the, sh the High Court in Glasgow by video link. And she didn't even listen to three words I said and said the adoption, there is no appeal, appeal denied, basically. And that was it. And then I was told I could go to the United Nations. And I thought, if the Attorney Secretary General did not follow up what his member of the public that he's supposed to look after, if he didn't follow up and find out if my rights were upheld, then what's the point in going to the Human court Rights of Court? Because that's they're the next man. They are representing them. And not only that, I just thought, they're taking the piss. They're just taking the piss. They're just running me into the ground. And I'd had a squash spine by that stage from going to London. So it was, it was and I had to carry all these files in my back, which squashed my back even more. <coughs> <coughs> um, <clears throat> so the moral of the story is, your courts are inside out. There's no point in having courts if even the children have not got any rights at all because that's the future generation. You're putting a death sentence on the whole system. You're putting a death sentence on everyone's lives and you're putting such a dark, depressing-ness on the rest of the world that demons just want to inhabit, you know. <coughs> Case closed. Class dismissed. Judge, your honour. Roger, 10-4, that. <coughs> In the bag. <coughs> Empire. <coughs>